Hi, and welcome back to another episode of At Home Science with myself, Leela Nordman, um, coming to you from the Fairbanks Museum Planetarium, um, but at home. So again, we're going to take a look at things that we have uh, seen in the last week. Um, so today being April 27th, um, this last week we've seen quite a few things on our, our walks outside. So I want to go ahead and show you some of those things. Um, so one of the first things I get to see was this teeny tiny micro moth. Uh, where micro moths are concerned, there's like um, I'm just like a hundred thousand um, different species. So it's really hard to tell exactly which moth this might be. Um, but I was just really excited. This was an insect that actually landed on my leg. And so you can actually see the antennas here, um, again in that head, but of course, our thorax and abdomen are covered by these large uh, wings right here. But you can see at least um, two of the six legs right there. Uh, and then I got to see this guy. Hopefully you, you see it right here on the gravel. Very, very green, green grasshopper. Uh, let me show you the side view. So I just thought this was really neat. This is sort of a young, very green grasshopper. Um, again, a short antenna and we can see the eye. And here is a front leg and a middle leg and then a back leg, that really large jumping leg. And then you can see the wings. They're, they're starting to grow. They're very short right now. Um, but they would continue to grow and fill out. Um, and I just thought the coloration of this was really cool. It was so, so green. Um, and again, one of those insects that we're going to start seeing more of and start hearing, um, hopefully very soon. And what I wanted to do is, and it's, it's not a great video, but I wanted to show you in slow motion, um, this is me just getting my finger really close. And I want you to notice it, when it explodes, look at all of the rocks that come off of it. So let's just one more time as I get closer and closer to my finger, you can really see those back legs and how hard they push off the ground. They even left sort of a little little patch of um, you know dirt behind. All the rocks were pushed away. So I just thought that was really neat just to see how far and fast um, they can use those back legs to propel them away from danger. Um, and then this one, hopefully you can see, this is another thing I saw outside, you know, not seeing many flowers yet. This is actually a whole clover patch right here. So this is just brand new clover starting to grow. But if you look right here, there was actually a bumblebee. And of course, I heard it before I saw it. So I heard that buzzing that's very typical. And then I tried to follow it. So let's see. So and hopefully you could hear it just a little bit. Um, and it's, it's hard to follow, but I'll play it one more time. And you can see how hard it is to see them. They fly sort of very quickly and erratically. And what, what they're looking for right now, these are actually um, females. So that other one, um, I'm not sh totally sure what it was, but this one is actually called a tri-colored bumblebee, uh, bombus. Uh, it looks like Terror uh, Naris. And this is, what I think is really neat is, again, you know, here's our head, here's our thorax with the legs and the wings, and then our abdomen. So let's see if we can look a little closer. You can actually see the tricolor, how it gets its name, sort of a black spot here on its thorax with the yellow stripes, and then this really, really bright sort of orange coloration. And this is one of the most common uh, bumblebees that we will see. This most likely, I only saw one, ooh, and look at that. There's a spider right over here. I didn't even notice. <laughs> uh, probably a small wolf spider, actually. Um, but what was really neat about this is, is watching this, uh, what I read up about is when you see them this time of year, it is most likely a queen. So I should have one more photo. This is most likely a queen bumblebee, a tri-colored queen bumblebee looking for an underground nest. So trying to find you know, holes or various different places here where she could go in and lay her eggs and create her colony of bumblebees. Um, so this is sort of one of the first bumblebees you'll see this time of year. And generally when you see them, it is the queens or um, you know, the, the one that will lay the, all the eggs that will create the entire colony. And again, they go underground. So they're looking for nests. So she was actually going through the grass. I could see her going 
uh, all around flying, looking for a spot, and then going under the grass to look potentially for a good nesting spot. Um, oops, and here's just one more. I think this is when she was getting ready to fly, but uh, like you can really see the antennas and those sort of compound eyes on top of her head. And again, th those three really brilliant colors there. And then just showing you now, you know, we looked at Colt's foot before. I only could find like one or two Colt's foots, but now we're seeing whole groups of them. So this is, again, a great food source, um, at least a first great food source for those bumblebees. They really like later in the season, they like feeding on milkweed, goldenrod, um, rhododendron, so um, other flowers. But for right, for right now, this is a great food source uh, for those queen bumblebees who are out and about looking for nesting sites. And then this last one I want to show you, which I just really like, is, is something called um, hen and chicks. And you may have seen this. It's this wonderful, very, um, su it's a succulent, so it, you know, it basically saves up a whole bunch of water. Um, it has thick leaves and you can see it even has sort of this um, edging on its leaf to help keep that water in. And it loves, you know, dry, dry places, sandy soils, things like that. You might see it down by the river, um, down by the Pasumpsic River, um, but in, in the sandy soils, not in the water necessarily. It, it likes that dry, dry um, sandy soil, but they also love full sun, and you can see that they're sort of reddish now, and they'll go into maybe like a pink or a bright green, but I just think they're a really neat plant. Um, they actually uh, propagate, or they, you know, they grow underground they'll send out a little runner and you'll get another one of these what they call rosettes um, popping up next to the hen so you think of the hen so the mother hen and her chicks and so she's got all these chicks and you can actually take one of those chicks and bring it home and plant it into some dry you know sort of sandy soil and it will actually start to grow and potentially grow some chicks or new rosettes of its own. So it's a really neat plant. And I also learned, which I did not know, in, in, um, in Europe, where um, you know, this is a plant is also native to, they were using it on the roofs of their houses. Um, and this succulent would actually prevent fires. So like, let's say you had a chimney fire in your house, your roof actually would not burn because this plant would be planted on top of it and it wouldn't allow for that roof to burn. So I thought that was really neat. And the other thing is it's considered a winter vegetable. Um, it is edible. Um, now I wouldn't go out and just go try one, you know, please um, read up some more on it. But this was just something that I had read, which I thought was really interesting is that um, people have used it um, as, a, as a food source before. Um, so again, just making sure when you see something like this, you know, really taking a look and appreciating it. If you want to, you can take it home and, and plant one of those little rosettes um, at your house and then read up more on it and see, you know, is it, um, what other capabilities does this plant have? Because it's pretty, pretty cool. All right, so now what I want to do is actually um, stop screen sharing and think about um, our native bees. So we were looking, you know, we just saw our bumblebees are out uh, a while back. We were looking at some of those other native bees, the solitary bees, the ones that live alone and they might make their home in, in the dirt. They'll actually dig a tunnel. Um, but not all bees um, dig tunnels. Some of them actually like um, to find holes or crevices that are already made. And so I'm going to show you how to make your own native bee home. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this down like this so that you can really see the table. Um, and the idea is we want to make something that is like a pipe, like a, a small hole. So this is actually, this is something that you could find outdoors. These are old lily stalks. So this has a natural um, hollow stem. And what I did is I took a whole bunch of them. So uh, the first thing is having some sort of container um, to hold your basically sort of small holes, or like the, these stalks that we're going to put in, but we're actually going to also create them out of paper so we can do it out of recycling. Um, but what I wanted to show you is I, I took a whole bunch of these sort of uh, daylily stalks that I found and I cut them all to the same length and I put them in this container 
And the idea is you could, if you have all of these together and you could fill it all the way to the top. So let me show you what I did is I took, it's a very long stem. Notice this is an incredibly long day lily stem and took one of these and just sized it. So the end, the hole isn't very big. So I'm actually going to take a pair of scissors. So it, it helps if you have um, scissors with you. Uh, and so once you've collected up your materials, you wanna cut that end off. And then I just use one that I've already cut as a way to measure it. And then I'll do another cut. And then again, keep measuring it so that they're all about the same length and then come to this end and make another cut. And just keep going down the line until you might find us. So see how this one, whoop, it's actually pretty strong. So we have to really close. This one actually got bent or broken. So we can see the inside of it very easily, but obviously we don't want to use this. Um, we want something that will really actually make a nice hollow stem. This one's a little squished, but maybe they could, but that idea that they could actually, individual bees could use each one of these stems and lay their eggs into them and pack them again. They, they might pack them with a little bit of pollen and honey um, for each individual baby bee. Um, but each one of these could have a bee or egg laid in them. And so these would each would be a single solitary native bee that, and so each one would be a home. So think of it as almost like a condominium association or apartment building. There's a whole bunch of bees all sharing this same container, all raising their bees in it. So these work very well. And so again, you could fill up the whole container and then you could just put it outside on its side and just leave it maybe in a sort of a slightly sunny spot somewhere where maybe the wind won't get it. So maybe in the corner of a building or off to the side maybe, um, but definitely want a sunny area where they will be attracted to these without too much wind and they will go ahead and actually make their homes in these. Um, but you don't, if you don't have access to daylilies or, um, you know, think of like, bamboo, which we don't necessarily want to grow here in Vermont, but that idea of anything with a hollow stem, it's a great thing to collect and then cut all to the same length and put into your container. But if you don't have that, you can do the very same thing with just a nice piece of paper. Um, so what I was going to do is I've already sort of cut out a certain size and you can sort of pick whatever size you want. But again, each one is going to be about the same size because you're going to cut strips. And once you have that strip, you're actually just like those hollow stems. And this is, it's a little bit hard, so you gotta practice this, but you're gonna roll it up so that you have essentially just like this, your own handmade out of paper stem. And then, Having some tape on hand is great because you're going to want to let tape just a little bit on each end. And so you could use tape or glue, but tape might be a little bit easier to work with. And then I'm going to tighten this up because it got a little loose, but I'm going to get my tape first. So this is it's definitely not the easiest. It's going to take some practice, but you definitely have some time. I think this is going to be a rainy week. so. Here we go. So we've got, so we've got our first one, it, and it doesn't have to be perfect, but that idea that you've made this nice tube, you can see all the way through it, and you what you will do is you go ahead and make a number of these. So again, another you know strip of paper. You'll just repeat over and over again until you have enough to fill a container. So that's why, in some ways, it's nice. Nature's already made them for you. You just are cutting them down, and this would be a, a plant that a native bee might choose uh, when it sees the stem down on the ground. But here's your, again, you're making this whole apartment building for them versus um, hand making these, which do take a little bit more time and dexterity, meaning your hands, you're going to be using your hands a lot and trying to be as precise as you can. It's 
not super easy, but just making sure that this is actually closed down so that you really have a nice hollow tube that is about the same size up and down. And it's okay if they're different sizes because you will actually attract different size native bees um, to your various tubes that you make. And the other thing is you, if you don't necessarily have to use white paper, you can also, you might have a lot of um, brown paper bags at home. And this is again something where um, you can cut those strips very easily and think about the size. So this, these tubes that I'm cutting now are gonna be even longer. I'm gonna make sure that I, because I cut through both sides of the paper. So here we have our two strips. So this one might be a little bit harder because it's gonna be a little less to roll with because you can see it's a thinner strip. But again, rolling it up, and taping it down and realizing that this is even longer, if you notice, so you can make different lengths, different size um, holes in the tube, but all of that will be very appreciated by your native bees. Um, and so these are all places where they're gonna look, to make a home to raise their eggs or their you know, baby bees. And by doing this, you are not only helping them, but you're really helping yourself. Because remember all of those plants that you may have planted for your butterfly garden? You may have started some seeds that are going to be some flowering plants. And not only are butterflies going to appreciate that butterfly garden, but all of your native bees are going to appreciate all of the food that you're making available to them by planting those seeds that you found out in nature and, and making more of those plants. And hopefully, um, you know, again, thinking about those black eyed Susan and various different things that are great nectar plants, plants where they can get their food. Bees, native bees and even European bees, all of them are going to appreciate that. Um, but our, the difference with our native bees is they are solitary. This one bee will live in each one of these and raise their young which is a big difference when you think about those social insects, the, the ones like um, honeybees and things like that, which live in hives, which are definitely different. But I just wanna show you that this is a very simple way, and I'll stick them in, of making native bee homes for various different species of our wild bees here in Vermont. Um, so again, finding a cup, anything that you can spare that's in the recycling, finding, you know, either using some white paper, it can be lined paper, can be brown paper, they don't care. If you're able to, and you can find some, um, na you know, nature's products basically, like anything that um, has a hollow stem that you can then cut up um, and make about the same length is perfect. And then going ahead and finding that sunny place outside with a windbreak, you know, could be the corner of a building or maybe a berm, a little bit of a higher, you know, spot in the, the ground where you could place it down below, but it would, it's a, but as long as it's in a sunny spot in an area where the bees will have access to food, so again, your butterfly garden or various different flowers, you will have helped out all of those native bees and they will help you out with your vegetable garden or anything else that you might be growing, maybe apples for the fall, all of those flowers will need to be pollinated and these bees um, now having a place, a home near your home will be much, much happier and will go out and pollinate all of that uh, for you locally right where you are. So. I hope that that gives you something to do this week indoors if it's raining. It's a great project. It's a great thing to use with very uh, few, you know, you don't need very much. A pair of scissors, um, some tape, any type of tape works. They, again, they don't mind. They just want that hollow tube to live in. Um, so again, Please uh, get out there and you know look for those bumblebees, look for those native bees. Uh, but if you have to stay indoors this week, this is a great project to do to take care of your uh, local native bees. So thank you so much. Take care and see you all next week.